All right, another video going to be filmed here. This was also done by request either in late January or early February. Uh, the YouTube user asked me not to mention their name though for privacy reasons. Uh, if you guys would like a problem film, number one, you can go to my about page or whatever's on my channel and there'd be a long banner and in the little corner there'll be a button where you can click it and you can make a request if you would like. Um, if you don't want your name used, just put parentheses, no name, please, or something like that. I'll understand. Some people want their name mentioned. Some people don't. It's all you, man. Do what you want. All right. So getting this problem done, 2017 AMC 10B problem 18. It was also the 12B problem 13. In the figure below, three of the six discs are to be painted blue. We've got three blue. Two are to be red and one is to be green. Two red, one green. Two paintings that can be obtained from one another by a rotation or a reflection of the entire figure are considered the same. How many different paintings are possible? Well, we gotta think of a strategy of how to approach this. And for my money, I'm gonna go with what's going to restrict my situation the most and what's gonna be the easiest to evaluate like rotations and reflections of. A three blues, gonna be hard to think about all the different ways they could reflect, but let's just focus on the one green. One green can only go in one circle. And so you probably really can see then there's only two scenarios for that one green. It can either go in the corners or it can go not in the corners, in the middle of the, of the sides, if you will. So uh, if we put it in this corner, all the ones that I put it in this corner and this corner will be reflections or rather rotations of this one. So we don't need to worry about putting G in these. We don't have to triple it or anything. We're just gonna focus on if G is in this spot, how many ways can I do it? Next up, we don't wanna fill in the circles and then erase and then fill in and get, no. Gotta have a better way than that. We're gonna have to come up with a notational method to uh, efficiently work through the problem. So method way number one, if I have G in the corner, I'm just going to place the R's next. The next uh, easiest to think about is only two to place. If I put the R here and the R here, the B's would go like this, all across one side like that. All right, let's stick with G here and R here uh, in this same order, but let's not put the other R here. Let's move it to here, for instance. And if I do that, the B's will make a little like equilateral triangle topper over there. Um, notice the system I'm using. I'm focusing on isolating this and maintaining it and working with the remaining part. You don't want to randomly create these and then ask yourself, oh, do I have them all? No, that's going to be a difficult question to answer. But if we work systematically with an algorithmic process, you're going to feel very comfortable in the end that you do have them all. So uh, three, if I did three, uh, what would we do if we put G here, R here, but I don't put the R here. I've already put it in these two spots. There's only two more spots to try. So I will put the R here, B, B, and B. Let's double check there's no reflections. It can't be a reflection with the two R's here unless I switch the two R's. Um, it can't be a reflection here either, and this is definitely not, nope, they're all unique. We can be very sure of that. Uh, even if you're confident, you should still be asking the question just to be very careful. You know the test is tricky. Let's go to another one. We're going to have G here. We'll put R here. And as we said, when we pointed at these two, there was only two spots left. We did this one right here. Let's put it up at the top. And definitely there's not one where the R's are separated like that with G in a corner. So this will be a unique one. Okay, let's get to the fifth one then. I'm going to keep G in the corner like we said. And we're going to move R out of that second spot. So we're going to put it, where can we put it? If we don't put R in the second spot, could I put it here you might wonder? What if I put R here and then I had B here? and maybe B here and R here. Would that be different? No, this is gonna be a reflection of which one? R here and R here, it would be the reflection of this one when I put the R here and R here. Do you see how that works? Um, I just, or a rotation if you will, I can even do that. No, it'd be a, ref a reflection, yeah. If I reflected over 
uh, this line right here, this R would go here, this R up to here, and it would look like the last one that we just did. So you don't need to do any with the R right here. We've already accounted for all of them by reflections, and so we'll keep the G, we'll not put an R in that spot. Now we've got three places where the R could go. Let's do two R's next to each other. Ask yourself a question, does an R have to go in one of these corners? It absolutely does. So if I reflected this over to put this R up here, that would be no good. Let's get one more going this way by splitting those R's in the corners. Keep them separated. The B's now in the middle, but the R's are here. That is six ways. Now comes time for questions, right, for yourself. When you're solving problems, you need to be analyzing if there's more efficient ways to do what you've done correctly. It's not good enough to just get the right answer. You need to be improving upon your methods. That's why when you do a test in a mock solve and you only check the ones you got wrong, you're doing it wrong and you're leaving points on the board because you're missing shortcuts and improved methods of thinking that you could be learning by looking at all of the solutions and trying to learn multiple ways to attack a problem. If you know five ways to attack a problem, there's a real good chance you can think of one under the pressure of time when it counts. Okay, so uh, what I wanna ask is, there was five spots here and there's two red. Why is it not five choose two equals 10? Um, or why is it not five choose two equals 10 divided by two to account for uh, reflections? Right? If I divided by two, wouldn't there be a one reflection of each? Why doesn't that work? You know what? Explore that. See why it doesn't work. These are the only six ways you can have with G in the corner. And that's why I didn't go with the combinations way because you're trying to get too cute by half, they say, as they might say, and you're going to cost yourself by making a silly mistake. You know the test is tricky. There can't be that many ways by listing. Put in the extra 30 seconds to a minute that it takes to list if you're efficient with it and you've practiced it um, to get that down. Um, so uh, let's go to G in the middle here and let's think about all the ways that R could go from there. Um, I am going to erase these because I need the space and the board's just not that big. So uh, if we do G in the middle, where could the R's go? Again, let's sandwich the G between the R's. Roger that, that's Roger. All right, and then that's gonna be the seventh one and then the eighth one, let's keep G there. We'll put R on its left, but not R here, which means it has to be B. Let's put the R right next to it, the B here and the B here. Let's do number nine. We'll put the R, again, we're keeping the same RG format and we're moving the R to the different positions. Here, here, let's go here, where the other R is over there, B, B, and B. Let's do another one with R and G and R separated at the top. All of these are going to be unique um, because the R's, yeah, it's definitely not gonna be a reflection or anything like that because these two maintained now, if I put the R in this position and not this position, all of those would be reflections of this one. So don't do those. We will try not putting the R's in either of the spots directly next to the G, okay? So not on the same row. Um, let's erase these as well. If you need to look at these again, go back and rewind the video to verify. If I do number 11, I, I had to make the circles big enough so you can see it on camera. Um, if I do number 11 here, we'll put G here, we're gonna sandwich it with two Bs, and then we got a place where the Rs are going to go. If I do both Rs in the second row, that's gonna be unique. Um, if I don't put both Rs in the second row, I just put one and the other one here, that will also be unique. And it doesn't matter if I took these two and made them both Rs, um, and this one a B, would it? Um, because you got 15 there. Let's see. Oh, no, if I made both of these R's, it'd be the reflection of this one right across this line. Okay, so that's 12. You're definitely not going to get three more. This will be the ultimate answer. Don't be afraid to dip into listing. If I was solving this under like timed conditions, not explaining it to you, 
if you know what you're doing and you get started right away, it's about a three minute, three, maybe, maybe a little bit more, but probably no more than four minutes, even with your cross checking of your results for rotations and reflections. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys in the next video.